Good evening. Welcome to St. Ursula. Today we celebrate the Solemnity of Christ the King. Our celebrant is Monsignor J. O'Connor. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening. And we welcome those who are joining us on this live stream mass on Saturday afternoon uh, at St. Ursula's Church in Baltimore. We gather with the church throughout the world this day to celebrate the solemnity of Christ, the King of the universe, a feast which has its origins between the two world wars, World War I and World War II. Pius XI in, um, in 1925, faced with the rise of totalitarianism and uh, religious persecution throughout the world, wanted to accentuate the fact that Christ was the king of all the universe, that uh, the root of all every authority was to be found in Christ. And so he establishes this feast that we might remind ourselves in this world that we live under the mantle of the authority of Christ. And we understand in this liturgy that that mantle is a mantle of mercy and a mantle of compassion. And so we now entrust ourselves into the powerful and the merciful presence of our God. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep as a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep. So I will tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, and the strayed I will bring back. The injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I will judge between one sheep and another between the rams and the goats. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, and then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, <clears throat> when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne, and all the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire 
prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. So this Feast of Christ the King always strikes me as being um, rather counterintuitive and rather strange for the American experience. Because our nation exists because we rebelled against a king. We rebelled against a monarchy. And we established a democracy that continues to unfold before our eyes and we continue to begin always to come to understandings of what it means to be in a democratic union. So it's sort of different, this feast of Christ the King for us, if we only looked at it from the perspective, from a secular perspective and, and from the world. But I think in this Mass we are called to reflect upon the fact that we are all claimed by Jesus from his cross for the kingdom of God. And so we all live in, a king, in the kingdom of God. And this feast, as I said at the beginning of Mass, uh, was established to remind the world and all people that all authority on earth finds its origin in the authority of God and that it should reflect the authority of God. That is why Paul, in one of his epistles, writes that Believers should pray for government leaders. Pray that they would understand what their authority is about, what it is for, and that they might serve well their people. All of us share in the royal nature of Christ the King. When we were baptized, immediately after the water was poured on our heads, the priest or the deacon anointed us on the crown of our heads with chrism. And he prayed that we, that as we were anointed priest, prophet, and king, we might live our lives to the honor and glory of God. So there is a royal nature about us that comes from being redeemed in the blood of Christ, that comes from being created by, in the love of God. And so as we reflect on what is our royal nature about, where, where are we truly a noble people? We hear today's readings. And in the first reading, Ezekiel speaks to the people of Israel who are really in exile. They lacked leadership. They had no one to care for them. They were off into slavery. And God speaks to Ezekiel and he says, tell my people I myself will shepherd them. My authority, he says, is a shepherd's care for my people. And then as Ezekiel continues on, he describes what the authority of God as a shepherd's care looks like. And we can sum that up by saying that one who shows a shepherd's care and who has the authority and the power of a shepherd supplies what his people need. We hear that, that in that reading. Where God says, I will shepherd you. I will find the lost and bring them home. I will feed the hungry. I will bind up those who are wounded and sick. 
and heal them. I will bring all of my people to safety. So the authority of God, the nobility of God's people, is really that of that shepherd's care, who is powerful enough, powerful enough to find those who are lost, to find those who are vulnerable, to find those who suffer, and to gather them in and to meet their needs. In the gospel today, we hear the same thing, but there it's a little different. There it is, we are reminded that as disciples of Jesus, as missionary disciples of Jesus, we are to show a shepherd's care for one another and for all people. We, because we're claimed for that royal nature of Christ, because we're called to live with the nobility of faith, we are called to feed the hungry to give drink to the thirsty, to clothe the naked, to shelter the homeless, to gather in those who are lost. We are called to establish a solidarity among ourselves and all people so we would visit the sick, visit the imprisoned, be with them. That is the nobility of our lives. When we do those things, we are a people of charity, when we pray for others, when we do our best to drive loneliness away, and when we do our best to welcome the stranger, then we're displaying the nobility of our lives because we do that with the authority of God. We do that because we have been claimed in the blood of Christ to be a royal people, a people who can make the difference of God's grace in our world. You know, I was thinking about the origin of this uh, feast, and you know, as I said at the beginning of Mass, it really was the Church's response to a world in a troubled time. The world had just come out of a pandemic, the flu of 1918 and 1919. The world was living in a time of governmental turmoil, with the rise of communism, atheistic communism, and totalitarianism. The world was struggling with, with, to respect religious freedom, and oftentimes it was violated. It was a time between wars, a time when people didn't trust one another, a time when people just didn't want to deal with one another fairly or justly or well. It was a time of fear, and it was a time of, of an economic depression. So I thought about that, I thought, could sound like today. We're living in a time of a pandemic. We're living in a time of political turmoil. We're living in a time of economic instability. Where, how do we do this? How do we get through this? This feast says to us, remember, you're claimed by God. God is with you in this. You are his royal people. You are his noble people, a people blessed with his mercy, his compassion, his wisdom, his truth, and his love. Live the truth. Live compassionately. Be an, a minister of God's mercy in a, to a wounded world. And live with the wisdom of God that is ours in Jesus, the gift of God's spirit to us. So we come together today and we keep this feast of Christ the King. And although I might think it's, at least in a secular way, counterintuitive to who we are as citizens of the United States, it truly is a relevant feast for us today. Because we, who have been claimed to be, to share in the priestly life of Christ, and the, the kingly life, the royal life of Christ, we have something to bring to our world. We have something to bring to one another. We live by the authority of God's grace, love, and mercy that has touched us in Christ. And we are empowered by God's Spirit to bring that grace, that love, that mercy, that truth of faith, that wisdom of faith to our world. We give thanks to God this day, a God who has loved us enough and claimed us to be his people, a God who has shepherded us and redeemed us in Christ, who always does for us 
what we need to be done. And we pray that as we reflect upon our nobility as those who share in the royal nature of Christ, that we will live out that royal destiny that is ours. That we will be a people who do for one another and with one another for our world all that needs to be done to bring healing, to bring peace, to bring prosperity, to bring goodness to the face of the earth. That's what Christ wants to see in us at the end of time. He wants to see in us how we have carried out the mandate of being his noble people, the people who live and who exercise a royal authority of the kingdom of God and a people who have brought the touch of God's mercy, compassion, love, and goodness to the face of the earth. We pray today that in the face of all that might discourage us, in the face of all that might help us not feel good about ourselves, in the face of all the challenges we might have, that we will never forget that the Lord is with us, that his presence conveys upon us, has conveyed upon us in Christ, a royal nature, a sense of nobility with which we can live every day by bringing the goodness and the love of God to the face of the earth. God's holy word forms and fashions us in faith. Having heard this life-giving word, let us profess together the faith we share and seek to live fully each day. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us open our hearts and entrust our cares and needs and those of our church and our world to the Lord in prayer. That the church will be a worthy servant of the gospel and direct the people of God toward the promised kingdom, we pray to the Lord. The world leaders will govern justly and wisely and strive for true peace. We pray to the Lord that in Christ, the King of justice and life, the evils of abortion, infanticide, and euthanasia may be eliminated from our midst. We pray to the Lord that more men and women will generously accept the call to serve Christ and his church as priests, deacons, and religious brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord, Lord that married couples may have the wisdom and courage to support one another, helping each other grow and develop their talents 
to become all that God calls them to be. We pray to the Lord. For those serving in the armed forces, in law enforcement, emergency responders, and for those in health care, for the continued growth of peace and freedom in troubled parts of our world, we pray to the Lord. That those who have passed from this life may be gathered into the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. For Doris Bullington, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. And let us pray. Good and gracious God, we bless and praise your name. We trust in your mercy and your love which endure forever. Hear our prayers, know the needs of our hearts. We entrust them to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Praying, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable by God, the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless victim to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May calling therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for yourself. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Ursula, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. formed by divine teaching, we dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us be mindful of the peace of Christ that abides in our hearts through this Eucharist, that we might bring that peace to our world. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
us on our live stream by praying together the prayer for a spiritual communion. Please repeat after me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us join together in prayer to St. Michael the Archangel during this time of pandemic. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. There are a few announcements. Um, I believe these are current. Uh, youth ministry will meet uh, tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. in the Spiritual Center. And the Regional Respect Life Cluster meeting is this Tuesday evening at 7 p.m in the Spiritual Center. The speaker is Dr. Joe Marine, a cardiologist of, uh, at Johns Hopkins Hospital, who will be speaking on physician-assisted suicide. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Go, proclaim the Gospel of the Lord.